Hey, my name is Kelly Hood, and I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Optic Cyber Solutions. And today I want to talk to you about the NIST cybersecurity framework, but not just the cybersecurity framework. The update 2.0 has finally been released by NIST. And so I'm excited to spend a little time and dig into it today and walk through some of the highlights. So you're all probably familiar with the image on the left, and if you've been keeping up with the changes, the proposed changes for version two, that image on the right will also look familiar. But the biggest thing we'll see here with the addition is that addition of the new governed function that we're seeing represented in yellow on the right here. So a lot of things are the same about the framework. We still have the core, the profile, and the tiers being the primary components that make up the cybersecurity framework and help us figure out what we need to do in cybersecurity and how to manage that in our program. But they've also released a ton of resources in this update. So one thing that's different is we have the, the framework itself, and we see in the background there some of the categories, that it, the, well, all of the categories that are now included, and we'll get into some of the changes there. Um, but what they did in this updated release is they took out things like the informative references and have included that in other documents and other places available through the NIST website. So they've streamlined that core framework document a little bit, but added a ton of resources really um, to be found on the NIST website, and we'll get into that now. So some of the resources they provided are implementation examples, which are well examples of ways you might implement a subcategory or a category. So they're things that you don't have to do, but if you're reading a subcategory and you're like, I really don't know what this means, how do I protect data at rest? It'll give you some examples on where to start. They've also put together quick start guides. Um, we can see a sample here for small businesses. They've released several already uh, for small businesses, how to create a profile, how to use the tiers on supply chain, and then even one for ERM, enterprise risk management. So there's a lot of good resources there to go check out. And then also mappings. NIST has had the online informative references program for several years now, and they're continuing to expand on that. So here I've got a screenshot of one of the Excel formats that they have, that they've already done mappings to existing standards and frameworks against version 2.0. Um, there's also the cybersecurity and privacy reference tool that you can browse some of these references. So definitely make sure to check it out because there are a ton of resources um, that NIST has already put out that are all available on their website, and I will also link that below in this video. So as we start to get into the weeds a little bit, we have, I want to do a high level overview of what are the changes. So we can see left to right here with CSF 1.1 and version 2.0 is that we have increased a function. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a new function to govern um, that we can see in yellow on the right. So we're going from five to six. At the category level, we've actually lost one and there's a lot of detailed changes, but essentially there were 23 categories, now there's 22 and at the subcategory, there was also a decrease going from 108 subcategories to 106. So let's dig in on what these changes are and what they actually mean. And as I mentioned, govern is really the, the biggest change that you're going to see when you start looking at the framework. If, you're, if your company is using the cybersecurity framework, this is where you're going to find um, the bulk of the changes. If you're a way, something that you're going to need to have conversations with your stakeholders about um, is going to be around this new govern function. And really, it was taken, governance was there before. It's not like it's a completely new concept, but it was at the category level. And now they've expanded it into a full function with um, six different categories supporting that. We can see in the govern category, it's now been split across um, most of those specific subcategories that were there in 1.1 have been split across those four categories that we can see on the right there. Um, but they've also taken some things from identify just kind of across the board. We can see some concepts from asset management, business environment, um, and all of these kind of moving over to the right. So I tried to draw in some arrows as I've been going through and mapping them to help if you're looking for something specific. Um, this might be a place to start to see where where were things and where are they coming in now? Where, where do you look for them in the future? And some of them are actually coming out of Identify as well. So they're even pulling some areas or some topics and categories from uh, information protection processes and procedures and detection planning and pulling some of those more procedural things about how are we going to implement this capability and making sure that we have a structured process for that, all getting pulled up to governance. So 
as we start to think about what was taken away or, or removed and realigned, there were 10 categories that you're no longer going to see in 2.0. Now, that sounds scary at first, but they really didn't remove the concepts. They're just, like I said, realigned, renamed, and restructured. But I wanted to highlight on the left here, you can see in yellow, things like business environment, governance, identity management and access control, information protection processes and procedures, and so on. That if you're looking for a specific category on that, you're not going to see that anymore. But I, I wanted to show you where they are moving. To start off with governance, business environment, or what was previously business environment, is really becoming organizational context. So here they've largely just renamed that. Most of the concepts are getting moved right on over. So if you're looking for that, check it out in organizational con uh, context. Governance, as I mentioned earlier, the, the category from 1.1 has been split out now across, you know, largely across those four different categories on the right with risk management, roles and responsibilities, policies and oversight. So that makes sense. They're just breaking it out, making it a little bit more granular on the right there in 2.0. Um, identity management and access control is kind of a funny one, and I was debating whether or not to include this on my list because it is largely just getting moved over to identity management, authentication, and access control. Keyword being authentication now being highlighted here. Um, but it did get a new category identifier going from PRAC now to PRAA, so I wanted to make sure that anybody that was looking for that could see that change. Um, but a lot of those concepts are getting moved right on over in 2.0. So one of the bigger changes, I think, is really around information protection processes and procedures. And we can see that that category, which really was one of the largest in CSF 1.1, has been split out into really six or seven different other categories. So instead of having all of these concepts clustered in one place, they found other places that they felt like it made more sense and was going to be easier to understand what needed to be done. So that one is, a, is kind of a big change and you'll have to take a look. But if you're looking for a subcategory that was in that category of PRIP, you're going to find it across several different categories on the right there. Another one you may be looking for is maintenance and saying, where did that go? And it actually got incorporated into asset management and then largely into platform security. So platform security is another one of those new ones we'll dig in, but most of those concepts are just moved over there rather than being a specific category on maintenance. We're covering it in other areas now. And then protective technologies, which was another larger uh, category from 1.1 that's now getting split across other protect categories. So it's getting rolled into identity management, platform security, and technology infrastructure resilience, some of those new categories that were added. So we're realigning, but those concepts are pretty much still there. Detection processes, another one that's removed. Um, here, because it was focused on those processes, again, they didn't want to have a, it seems like they didn't want to have focused solely on processes there, so they rolled some into governance, some into improvements, but then obviously left the detection capabilities in the adverse event analysis category in the detect function. So that one's getting split out. Next, I wanted to talk about response planning. So we can see that on the left there, um, getting moved over to incident management. Again, this one is largely, most of the concepts are getting moved over, but it has been renamed to be a little bit clearer on what, what's being done there with the management of the incident, not just the planning of it, but actually how are we going to handle it throughout an incident if something was to happen. And then improvements. So we've got a new category that we'll talk about on the right there with the new um, improvement category and identify. And it's pulling in um, previous categories from Im improvements and respond and recover and actually broadening that a little bit. So saying we don't want to only think about improving our response and recovery activities, but we want to improve our identification, our protection, our detection, our governance. And so it's broadening that and saying we're going to improve everything and it got moved into identify. Now I want to highlight the areas that were added, and we can see those on the right here in the dark gray color. So there were 11 categories that were added or realigned or renamed that felt significant that I wanted to make sure to highlight. So now we've talked about govern and how all of those are new because we have a new function, but I did want to dig into improvement a little bit here. And I mentioned previously that the previous improvement categories in respond and recover are being brought up to one consolidated in one category and identify. It's also pulling some of those uh, subcategories from information protection processes and procedures and detection processes, really rolling all of those improvement activities into one place, knowing that we need to improve across all of the functions and not just a limited set. 
We also have the new identity management authentication and access control. But again, the keyword here is authentication. There's a, it's largely the same as the identity management and access control cat category that was there previously, but it's been expanded a little bit, brought in some of those concepts of protective technology that were removed from that category since it was, since it was uh, removed and, and incorporated there. One of the bigger new changes that we have is around platform security that you can see over here on the right, and that's pulling from information protection processes and procedures, maintenance and protective technology to really focus on, you know, hardware, software, services of physical and virtual platforms, to really kind of broadening this point of view to look at a, a platform as a concept and then making sure we have security around that. So it covers things like configuration management, maintenance, logs, secure software development, uh, but that's one to definitely take a closer look at. Also, technology infrastructure resilience is another fairly significant change, pulling from data security, information protection processes and procedures, and protective technologies. So it's really taken a lot of the, the meaty concepts and, and subcategories out of those categories and pulled it over into this new category. So it focuses on security architectures and making sure that we're managing our risk to protect our, um, our networks, our environmental security, our resource capacity, and making sure that we have the appropriate resilience within our organizations. Um, then we have incident management on the right, which again, it pulls a lot from response planning, which is one of those removed categories, but also brings in some of the analysis components from respond. So we can see that coming in there as well. And then there are a lot of things that really stayed the same. And I wanted to highlight that here. We talked about a lot of change, a lot of things that are different, but there are a lot that are largely the same and kind of running down from top to bottom, uh, left to right, you know, asset management, still asset management, risk assessment, still risk assessment. There are some changes in the, at the subcategory level, but in general, the concepts at the category level are fairly consistent. We can see even, you know, risk management strategy was moved out of identify into the new govern function, um, but it's largely covering similar topics. Supply chain risk management also moved over to the, the new govern function. That uh, category has also been expanded, so that's definitely worth a look there. They felt like with the um, dependence that everybody has on their suppliers and their supply chain that that needed a closer look, so that was, um, that was broadened or expanded a little bit. Um, we can see moving down the line, awareness and training moved over, data security also moved over, is still there. We've got anomalies and events. We have some slight rewording on some of the um, detection categories, but they were similar enough that I felt like they were uh, didn't need to be called out as new or removed, just a little bit of wording tweaks there and then more changes at the subcategory level though. So definitely take a look. And then in respond, um, we can see a lot of similarities being pulled over and then recover, um, pulling over recovery planning, clarifying that to incident recovery plan execution and communications to round it out around incident recovery communications. So um, a lot of changes, but a lot really is the same. It's not a completely different framework. You're not going to have to relearn everything, but there are going to be some nuances you're going to want to take a closer look at. And here, just to round it all out, I put all of my arrows on one slide, if that is helpful, um, to be able to look at all of the changes. But I hope this has been a helpful walkthrough of just seeing, you know, there's a lot of new, there's a lot of different um, in 2.0 and what we're seeing, but there's a lot of the same as well. So please reach out if you have any questions. Um, I hope you have found this valuable. I did also want to link here to the Cybersecurity Framework version 2.0, the official version that was released, and the resources. So with all of those resources that were added, I think it's going to be really valuable for the community to go be able to get those quick start guides, check out the mappings, the implementation examples, and those can all be found on this website at that second link there. So thank you all for taking a look. Please reach out if you have any questions and let me know if, uh, if you'd like me to dig in any further in other areas. Thanks. Cyber Solutions strives to help organizations identify and address their blind spots through our assessment, implementation, and advising services. For more information about Optic Cyber Solutions and how we can help you integrate the CSF update or conduct a CSF gap assessment, reach out at info at or check out our website, OpticCyber.com.